performers at the time. An astonishing array of actors that, that came out of Montreal at that time. At that time. And I think really you were saying because, uh, largely because uh, of your voice at that time, because to work in radio in those days, it was very difficult to get in, um, but because mom had a trained voice, a British voice, was very articulate, she had some opportunities, and um, really right out of high school was met and worked with uh, these actors, and uh, then had the opportunity to come to Toronto and to be part of the formation of the Stratford Theatre Festival. In Were you there in the first year? Yeah. 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 Right at the very beginning of everything. Right at the very beginning of everything. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Inga, Paul, tell us about Maya. Well, Maya was born in Iceland in a small town, Sigifjöve, and um, from there she uh, until I'm not quite sure exactly how old I was a little girl. She spent summers in Scotland. No, the other way around. Winters in Scotland? She has no idea. I found out that I'm sixth generation Canadian, so I do not have the experience of uh, 
coming from different uh, countries. And I think that's quite significant in both of them because they're both, both very uh, devoted to Canadian culture, bringing Canadian stories to life. So I'll start with Mom. Um, and grew up in Toronto, in North Toronto, and uh, from a young age uh, really enjoyed uh, the, the theatrical realm. Uh, and came from families who really exposed her to theatre, uh, to Stratford and so forth, and went to National Theatre School, um, where I think was pretty good for her. And, um, and then she went to the Stratford uh, Festival and played Ophelia there. Which, I'll never forget, it was in my books the greatest Ophelia I have ever seen, and I've seen a number of them, and I'll never, never forget it, ever. <laughs> um, and then, that's where she met my papa. So I'll continue with mom's story, how about that? Should I do that? Okay, how about I just stop there and I'll bring dad into the picture. <laughs> so uh, dad and Paul uh, grew up in a farming community just uh, north um, from here, northwestern Huron County. Um, a very strong rural area where you work with your hands and you build and you sweat. Um, and I think that signifies dad very well in anything he does. He works hard and sweating, just getting ideas and just it's like a punching bag, just trying to figure it out. Um, so he wasn't, I don't think, quite exposed to theater, in my interpretation of your life, dad, um, uh, until he went to university at Western and he studied French. And he was going to be a French professor. My grandma really was looking forward to that, becoming a French professor. But then he went to France, and it all changed. Um, whether it's the 60s and that time of different thinking and trying to challenge things and not just trying to question who we are and stuff like that. And he met up with, um, or became aware of soon after, with uh, a French director, Roger Planchon, who was in uh, Avignon, no, Lyon, Lyon uh, who was doing very interesting uh, work at that time. Um, a lot of Molière, but really, my interpretation that I'm sorry, but um, kind of That's taking it and just questioning it and working it and not being so traditional approach to it all. And so when he came back to Toronto, uh, my, uh, the rumors of what Dad was like, he was just a very energetic, bouncy guy that just had all these ideas but not quite sure what to do with it or he was just questioning it and wondering what it's all about. And he came across seemed to be a, a group of people at that time in the 60s who in Toronto were desperate or not desperate, but just realizing that we don't, there wasn't a Canadian theater at that time. Was, a lot of stuff was brought up from the States or from or British plays. So this idea of what is a Canadian, um, what is Canadian theater? What, did, what would that look like? And so um, he studied, he was an assistant director in Stratford, and that's where they met. And I think they both ignited this kind of uh, passion and interest in discovering what uh, that Canadian theater would be all about. And so they started with a group of many, many directors and actors and some who have left us right now. Um, but, uh, and they created this type of theater called collective theater where you go and uh, bring actors. You have one um, brilliant, but some people think uh, uh, questionable, confusing director vision. Um, and then you also have these, these actors who are passionate to have a story. And they say, okay, here's the story, 1837, go find it. And so it's really this kind of seeking real life people, uh, archival research, trying to figure out what that language would be about, what the themes would be about to make it Canadian. And um, so many plays started from there, the farm show being a big one, a well-known one, um, where they went to a rural community, back to where uh, Paul came from, and Mel was involved too, and they had to go and find the stories themselves and then bring it to life for the people. Uh, to people, a rural community that have never been, maybe they have been to theater, but never seen themselves up here. So the idea of uh, a Canadian story for a Canadian audience. And so that kind of uh, started a whole uh, bunch of plays. And once again, it's not just the two of them, it's a whole bunch of them that were doing this at the same time and thought that this was a very uh, good thing to develop. And I also have a sister. <laughs> And your dad was long-term uh, artistic oh, director of theater, passed her eye as well. Right. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Sorry. And her, so, theater, yeah, theater passed yeah. her <laughs> Great. Well, well, that was absolutely super. <laughs> I am so impressed how much you guys 
know about your folks. That's really wonderful.